Welcome to the Eschel Centre here in Berlin and welcome to the ID Tech X show. We've got a really uh, interesting show for you over the next few days. We have over 240 speakers, attendees from 56 countries. But really our main objective with this event is to try and marry um, the progress with the latest emerging technologies with big users and brands across the world. Our whole focus on this event, putting it together, has been to the commercialization of these different technologies. And so we hope you leave the event with a really good understanding as to what is the latest capabilities with these different technologies, what's their roadmap going forward, but also critically the connections allowing you to succeed in your business endeavors. A little bit about ID Tech X. We are, of course, the host of this event, and events is about half of what we do. Um, the other half is we do research, and for 18 years, we've been uh, tracking a range of emerging technologies, as you can see on this slide here. Our main objective is to really help our clients understand these complex areas and helping them make the best strategic business decisions based on research we do, uh, having analysts all around the world who go out, speak to companies, do site visits, go to conferences, and collect this information and disseminate it after it's being analyzed. And it's that feature which also makes this event relatively unique because it's our analysts who put together the types of topics we're gonna to be covering, um, who we invite to speak, and therefore all the speakers here have been chosen because we believe they've got some very interesting things to say that you should be aware about really moving the whole industry and the use of these technologies forward. So in terms of the format of the show, for those of you who've been here before, you'll know by now that this consists of an event looking at several different but very much related technologies and one common exhibition. We find this works very well because it brings together the whole value chain on these different technologies. For example, we're covering printing technologies from 3D printing through to print electronics. We're covering many different types of advanced materials, including things like graphene and carbon nanotubes, which in turn are being used in devices like energy storage innovations, such as batteries. And they in turn are being used to enable um, new markets, including electric vehicles, IoT, consumer electronics, and so on. So all of these things are very much interrelated, and therefore it's proved very fertile in the past. For example, if you're a material company, you can meet with car companies, consumer electronics companies, consumer goods companies, and find out what are their problems and what are their needs, and you can bear that in mind now as you do your research on these products. And similarly, if you're a user company looking to differentiate or grow your business in new ways, um, you can find out what are the new components coming through, what's their current state, um, and you can start to think about how to design these into your products for greater differentiation from competition. So at this event, expect to see the whole value chain um, in one place, and hopefully you'll find that very fruitful in your discussions. Let's have a look at who's here. I mentioned already we have attendees from a whopping 56 countries. And if we look at the number of people who have pre-registered for this event, it is 22% higher than this point last year. And last year was 17% higher than the year before. So it's an event that's truly um, growing at quite a rate and gaining more and more momentum. If we look at where the attendees come from in terms of what their company does by uh, the supply chain position, about 20% of the companies attending the show are material suppliers. Uh, similar number of components, similar number of supplying components, uh, sorry, equipment. Um, and also a similar number who are end users or integrators. And on the right, it shows the main vertical industries which are covered. Uh, those include automotive, consumer electronics, healthcare, uh, textiles and fashion, and the others you can see there. At this event, we have 193 exhibitors with the space completely sold out, and they're coming from 23 countries. And in addition to that, we have 30 posters from organizations all around the world. I'd like to say a special thank you to our platinum sponsors who are MGI Ceradrop and Novacentrix this year. In addition, you can see from the silver sponsors here, uh, we have a whole range of companies from material suppliers through to semiconductor companies through to equipment makers. But overall, as you can see on the pie chart in the bottom left, um, about 20% of the exhibiting companies are material companies similar number of equipment providers, and about 40% of those providing new innovative components or complete solutions. So there's going to be plenty to see, and many of the companies will be showing new things on the trade show floor for the first time. We've also particularly encouraged our exhibitors to show complete working products and prototypes, and there's lots of exciting things for you to get your hands on and see how these come together with a complete system point of view. 
What I'm going to do now over the next 10 minutes or so is just to really whet your appetite and give you um, a few highlights and a few key trends of each of the main technology types we'll be covering. So I'll start off first with this topic of printed, flexible and organic electronics. We take a very broad view of this because all these types, whether it's flexible or printed, are very much interrelated. And in 2017, this is a market that is just over $29 billion, but the majority of that is OLED displays, which are not printed yet, but we include them because they're organic-based and moving towards being flexible. Um, then we have sensors, conductive ink, and a range of other emerging components coming through. But it turns out in this industry that actually printing, while, um, while very important, um, isn't the main driver. The main driver is the new form factors which are enabled um, with these types of new materials and manufacturing processes. So having flexible devices or even having devices which are rigid but are, are on plastics, they can be thinner and more robust overall. In 2017, 40% of all these components here um, fall into that category. And over the next 10 years, 63% um, will be predominantly flexible. So here companies are looking to use these new form factors and features to differentiate products and even premium price products. For example, um, we'll have um, progress with things like conformal and flexible displays and lighting, um, whether it's OLEDs, LCDs, or indeed even printing inorganic, inorganic LEDs for uh, lighting. Also flexible sensor arrays and areas such as structural electronics, including in-model electronics, which will be a big feature of this event, um, and also new ink formulations allowing stretchable inks taking you into e-textiles. Talking of e-textiles, that takes us into the world of wearables, which is another key conference track we're focusing on. Uh, we look at the whole market space for wearables, but in this event in particular, we're going to be focused on a few of these aspects, mainly the ones which are growing the fastest. They include um, e-textiles, growing at 66%, uh, compound annual growth rate over the next five years. And the other main session we'll be focusing on is AR and VR, which had huge levels of investment, as I'm sure you're um, aware of, but also many unsolved technology problems. And so we'll be looking at what those problems are and what are the solutions to them. In the smart watches and fitness trackers scenario, um, their revenue growth is now slowing down due to commoditization. So we're looking at the antidotes that to that, uh, which is new types of components which can help differentiate um, thanks to truly conformal electronics. We'll also be looking at the whole medical devices space, which takes longer to get to market but will remain a huge part of the segment um, because um, there's so much value and need in those devices. Another aspect we'll be looking at is IoT in this whole world of connected things. And one thing we try and do at this event, uh, which is very important, is not just focus on all the hype, but really help you see where is the true value and where is the money. So within our IoT conference, we're specifically focusing on where are the short to medium term opportunities for highly profitable businesses. And this is a summary of some of those areas. There's a lot of work going on with smart cities, and in particular, these are government-led, so um, there's no choice to do it. They're usually mandated, say, in the form of smart meters. Uh, for example, the EU 27 countries have a target of 80% market penetration by 2020, meaning about 50 million smart meters a year. The second biggest application here, which is proving successful for suppliers involved, includes things like street lighting, with many projects now being fully rolled out. Another completely different area will be smart homes, which is consumer-led, having home automation with a lot of growth recently in things like voice control with the Amazon Echo product, um, in addition to smart thermostats, lighting, and so on. And over the next 18 months, ID Tech expects a lot of growth in this area, and we'll be covering the progress there. And if we look at what's going on in industry, what we've found is that the hype hasn't turned out to be true with billions of these nodes being used, but people are using IoT um, very successfully solving uh, specific problems. And one of those key areas is around predictive maintenance, an area that we'll be looking at. And here, most of the value is in the software and the complete system provision as opposed to selling hardware, because not too many hardware nodes are sold at this moment into that sector. And then related to this whole world of connected things, coming at the bottom of the pyramid in terms of lowest cost but highest volume is the humble RFD tag, which has taken about 10 years longer than people thought to really take off, but it's now truly there, seeing very strong growth. In 2017, we think that 14 billion RFD tags will be sold, and that's up from about 9.5 billion last year. So it's truly growing in, in large leaps and bounds going on everything from whiskey in Korea, where it's um, law to tag the bottles there, 
through to about six billion tags being used on clothing. So we'll be looking at all the, the business and the technologies behind this and following that money in this sector. Then there's many emerging um, and related component technologies which we'll be addressing. Um, one is sensors, which is of course key to wearables, autonomous vehicles, IoT and much more. And there's a huge amount to cover on sensors, and I can only do a short summary in, in one slide, but the main trends are around miniaturization, reduction in power, uh, consumption and also new form factors. For example, now that more smartphones have OLED displays, because OLED displays are semi-transparent, it means we can put the fingerprint sensor underneath the display, unlike an LCD display. Um, and here, the main issue is to try to get that fingerprint sensor down to be no, no more than about a millimeter thick. In other areas, we've recently been looking at um, growth sectors and sensors, and one of those is gas sensing. Um, this is a key type of sensor component, which isn't currently available in things like your cell phone, and so there could be a huge opportunity for that, but also going into things like pollution sensing, uh, which we're already beginning to see. And we forecast that becoming a $3 billion market over the next 10 years. There's a lot of also business uh, progress going on within this area with expansion and consolidation through acquisitions leading to several large players but in addition to many small players with innovative technologies and that's our aim at this event to air all of those uh, issues for you with those companies, the key players presenting. Energy storage of course is another critical aspect to enabling all these different aspects. And at our events, we're looking at it in two main ways. The first is to look at improvement to the traditional lithium-ion battery technology. This has been improving by 5% or so year on year, but it's not enough. We need a factor of five improvement. So we'll be looking at the materials, the manufacturing techniques, and the markets for advanced lithium-ion batteries, and then even later on, post-lithium-ion batteries. Um, and there are also many surprises as we go through, which we'll be highlighting. You know, quite often um, when companies get into um, a new sector, they believe that technology will be used for one thing, um, but it ends up being used for something quite different. It can be surprising how big those other markets can be. If you look at the chart on the right, you'll see that the demand for batteries um, in terms of gigawatt hours and electric buses is more than the demand for all batteries in terms of gigawatt hours for consumer electronics. So no surprise that uh, companies are heavily targeting the EV sector. In addition to that, we're also going to be looking at the second aspect in energy storage, it's the new form factors of batteries coming through. So thin film, flexible batteries, which are enabling new ways to differentiate in wearables and in AR, and even creating completely new product categories. Now, talking of EV, that's um, a critical part of uh, this event too, because automotive, um, in addition to growing so strongly, um, also relates to everything from energy storage to sensors to structural electronics to energy harvesting and much more. So we have many car companies here talking about some of the things they're doing with all these different aspects. And this is going through a huge amount of change, as I'm sure you're aware. We have, for example, the large automotive companies now being complemented with technology companies coming in. Um, and we're moving to fully autonomous vehicles. And so while business models are changing, where we eventually foresee a peak car scenario in around 2030, we're also seeing a lot of changes in the, in the drivetrain of cars as well, moving away from conventional internal combustion engines to ultimately pure electric vehicles. And so in pure electric vehicles at the moment, initially batteries are a large part of the cost, but over time, thanks to um, additional technologies like energy harvesting, light weighting, structural electronics, all themes we're covering at this event, uh, we'll see batteries becoming less and less of the core cost, ultimately ending up with even energy independent vehicles. Related to that is energy harvesting, which um, at this event we cover the full spectrum. Quite a lot of people, I think, relate energy harvesting to just the low power aspect of energy harvesting. And here, while there are some successes in the form of using energy harvesting, things like wireless sensors, most of the value um, tends to be in the suppliers who are providing the complete system, including also the data analytics and software solution, because the numbers of these wireless sensors powered by energy harvesting is still relatively low, but there is uh, money in, in the whole system's provision. But we also take a broader view and importantly look at um, the higher power side, which is mainly around electrical engineering. And here there's um, huge amounts of work going on, backed by big players. They include work on energy independent vehicles, as I've mentioned, and you'll be hearing more from IFEVS about their pizza truck, which um, 
never needs to be plugged in and needs no gas. It's powered completely by the solar on it and it's available today. Um, all the way through to new um, work that we've currently researched on airborne wind energy. And this is backed by large players, including organizations like Google, who are looking at other ways to um, create energy um, where it's needed most. And last but not least, we have 3D printing. This is an area which is seeing very strong growth. Um, the biggest markets in uh, 2017 in order or automotive first, then aerospace and the hobbyist market. But it's the aerospace market that's growing the fastest at about 34% compound annual growth rate according to our data, which you can see here in our research. And so it will become the largest sector over the next 10 years. That's then very much related to the types of materials that people are printing. We're seeing a lot of interest in 3D metal printing with strong growth from those different suppliers, including large acquisitions, but also more players entering the market with cheaper systems enabling um, metal printing. So at this event, we'll be covering all those different options, polymer printing and metal printing, including the combination with electronics, such as 3D print electronics, uh, with speakers covering these aspects in different tracks. So I hope that's really whet your appetite and just gives you a few of the high level trends, uh, but talk to you through a few other aspects of the event and a few things to look out. New this year, we have the Apparel Zone in Demonstration Street, and this is a collection of many different types of wearable technology. Also for the second year running, we have the ID Tech X Launchpad. Um, we recognize that a lot of um, exciting technology is still at a fairly early stage. And so what we want to do with Launchpad is give the best companies and the best organizations really um, the visibility at this sort of event to show their products and working concepts and prototypes. So all of the winners of the Launchpad scenario will be showing completely working systems. And many of them, we think, will become successful business in the future. And it varies from new types of innovative sensors all the way through to a complete vehicle. So do make sure you take a look at that. But there's much more going on as well. We have different types of completely energy independent vehicles, um, solar v tree, a Tesla exhibiting. And if you've never driven a Tesla, go to their booth, because now could be your chance. Um, we also have lots of networking going on because one of the objectives of this event, as I mentioned at the start, is that you leave with those critical contacts, allowing you to move forward with your business. So without further ado, I'd like to um, introduce the lineup of Cornerstones. And we've chosen these because we think they'll give a fantastic high-level view as to what are things going on and really pull together all the different technologies in addition to what I've just said. We have VF Innovations, uh, followed by Galvani Bioelectronics, Arm, and then Toyota. Um, and just in terms of the structure of the event, um, after the Cornerstones, the exhibition will open, um, followed then going into different conference tracks, each on these different related topics, which will start off with an ID Tech X analyst giving you the analyst view as to that sector, and then keynote speakers, particularly from end users, on these different topics, and then into the whole two days of the event. So if there's anything we can do for you at the event, please don't hesitate to approach any member of the ID Tech X team. We hope you have a great experience, learn lots, and meet lots of new connections, and we'll do our best to help support that. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome up Ben Cooper from VF. Uh, VF is a $12.4 billion company 